Hi, I'm Jamie Souter. I'm with Maker Square. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about tech company organizational structure and you. So what I want to talk about today is what the organizational structure of a tech company looks like and especially why it matters to you. We want to talk about maybe what a common one looks like, how you can find your own organizational structure if you're working at a tech company already. And then we want to talk about what to do with this information and how it can help you advance your career. So at a common tech company, um, there is an organizational structure. And what this means is at first we kind of have the founder. And then the founder hires people who hire people who hire people. You know, you're building teams and you're building a company and the company grows. You know, one employee, 100 employees, 1,000 employees, etc. Larger engineering organizations um, can have 1,000 or maybe even 10,000 or more engineers. Uh, the company as a whole can go well beyond that. So it's important to understand this structure because it's going to mean a lot for your career. And it's going to help you understand who the influencers are at the company. And maybe if you want to make some change or to create a new product and see it to market, uh, it really helps to understand the organizational structure. So I'm going to draw a common kind of organizational structure. So it usually starts, let's say, with a single founder up here, this dot. So this is, let's say, the founder. or Maybe it's you know the CEO or something of the sort, and then you know over time the company grows, it succeeds, and the founder starts hiring people. Right, each of these dots is a person, and the company grows more and more, and you hire more and more people, and then the company grows even more and more, and maybe you know, maybe this person is the VP of engineering, and they start hiring a team of engineers. And before you know it, the company is succeeding even more. And these engineers become engineering managers who hire a team of more engineers. You know, if we're looking at this kind of as a hierarchy, it starts to build out this kind of typical hierarchy. And before you know it, you know, there's layers upon layers upon layers at larger companies you might have eight layers deep or something. And right, this is you. So you kind of get hired on, usually at the fringe. And kind of the leaf node, if you will. Um, and the people above you have maybe more experience. Maybe they've been with the company longer. Um, but they just they do different things, and they direct different things. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are a more experienced engineer. Usually, your most experienced engineers tend to be down here as the leaf nodes, kind of doing the work, if you will. It's not to say that managers and others up the chain don't do work. They just kind of organize work and direct work. So this might be you as an engineer. This might be a teammate as a senior engineer. And this might be an engineering manager. And this might be a senior manager. You know, they manage managers. So these are usually people managers, right? And then maybe we get up to a director level. And a director is setting direction. So, you know, under the director, this might be, if I were to draw out kind of all the other nodes, right? This might be a fleet of you know, hundreds of people, hundreds of engineers in the end. You know, this one manager might manage a team of like five to 10. And then you might have like a senior director. And kind of up and up and up, right? Um, so why does this matter? And how can you find out what the organizational structure at your company looks like? Um, that one, I think, is, is simple. Ask your manager. That's the easiest way. Just ask your manager, hey, can I see our uh, company organizational structure? It's usually a document that they can just share, or maybe some like intranet type of link that they'll just share with you. So then, what do you want to do with this knowledge, right? 
you, you see this layout, does it matter to you? It absolutely does. And here's why, right? You're down here and you want to grow your career, right? You want to grow your career upwards. And you can grow upwards in a lot of different ways. You don't necessarily just have to go up the management track. There's often different tracks where you can remain technical. Um, I just happen to draw out kind of a typical management track. But to get upwards, you need to realize that you need to influence your manager to kind of fight for you. You know, imagine we're a company, I'm evaluating my employees on a yearly basis, and I'm gathering all the managers to say, hey, who should get a raise? Who should get a title promotion? Who's really kind of hitting the home runs and batting out of their league, so to speak? So not only does it matter that your engineer knows who you are, but that your manager's manager knows who you are, that your director knows who you are, maybe even that your senior director knows who you are. So it's really, really important that you get in front of these people, just get your name known, get your intentions known. It's not to say that like, hey, you know, one day I want your job. You could say that, but you could say, hey, I have some ambitions, I wanna prove myself here. How can I do that? Can you help me do that? You know, maybe you have a weekly meeting with your manager, talk about your goals, share your advancements, use data. Maybe you have a monthly meeting, sort of a, what we might call a skip level meeting with your manager's manager. Um, maybe once a quarter or something, you can meet with the director. Uh, the, the time of the people higher up in the chain usually is very, very taxed, so it's very hard to get their time. But you want them to be aware for you because when they go into these meetings to decide who gets these raises and promotions, they can't just give them out to anyone. I mean, right, they have a budget. They have to maintain that budget, stay under that budget. They would love for everybody to grow together. But that's just not how it works. It looks more like a bell curve where, you know, if, if we're thinking on a scale of like one to five, one is bad, five is great. Maybe a few people on a team can be given a promotion, given those fives. So you want to be that person. And to be that person, you have to have people fighting for you. So you need those people in the room at the table being aware of who you are, what you want, what you've done. And they can fight for you then. Because think, you know, they're going into a room with the other directors that are managing other fleets of engineers. And they're all kind of fighting for their own engineers. So you need to be able to give your management chain lots of ammunition to fight for you. But also, it matters that you make friends and acquaintances and have strong relationships with people that aren't in the engineering organization. You know, these, these other dots um, might be different teams, like the sales team, the marketing team, the customer service team, the legal team, the product team. So maybe we have kind of a product organization, just like the engineering organization, right? It just kind of builds out and out and out over here. And they have a bunch of two, you know, same amount of kind of layers. Um, but they have a whole bunch of kind of leaf nodes of product managers as well. Well, when engineer managers try and figure out how well did you do maybe over the last year or the last quarter or whatever this kind of pace is at your company of evaluating performance, not only are they going to look at the data that you've provided them, they're going to look at their own data, you know, their own opinions, but they're often going to do what's called get 360 degree feedback. So they're gonna ask people that have worked with you, those that are around you in all directions, 360 degrees, how is that person? Are they a good employee? Are they knocking it out of the park? Do you even know who they are? And you want the answer to be yes to all of those things. So it's really important that while you want to grow your career upwards, right? You also, you need to influence upwards, but you also need to influence sideways because of that 360 degree view, you know, this person is gonna be asked about you. And down, you know, another chain, this person's gonna be asked, how is he performing or she performing? And this person and this person. So these are usually peers, but they're often not physically sitting next to you. Maybe they're sitting at, you know, a grouping of tables down the way. Maybe they're at an entirely different office. Maybe they're a remote team, who knows? You're gonna to have to figure these things out these are people you're working with on a daily basis. You know, your designers that are designing the products that you're creating as an engineer. 
the product owners who are creating the vision of the products, the project managers who are maybe managing multiple projects at once, making sure they get out on time. Anyone that you are working with, have great relationships with them. It absolutely matters. So this is why it's really important to your career, not only to influence upwards, but to influence sideways. It's how you advance at a company, which is kind of how a company behaves. Thanks for watching. That's Tech Company Organizational Structure and You. Until next time, please like, subscribe, and comment, and check out some of our other videos. Adios.